So welcome everyone to this last session. Uh, I want to be thank everyone that came on Friday, came today to learn, to use out the public holidays to, to learn Torah. And today's topic, which myself and Rabbi Daron Resnick is going to be sharing with you, is on the topic of gratitude. So we know that in um, Hakara Satoyev, as we call it in Hebrew, so we know that the Torah is filled with the importance of gratitude. And uh, modern literature finally caught up. And now they also talk about, as they do many things, takes them a long time. Um, they've also discovered the greatness of gratitude and the benefits of gratitude, expressing gratitude, journaling gratitude, and so on and so forth, in speech and writing. Um, which part of what I wanted to highlight today is that just recently, Daron wrote a book, published a book on gratitude, which is on the, la- the it's for sale on the co- table at the end. With sorry? With Mohammed. With, with Jenna, sorry, sorry, that's right. I'm talking about gratitude. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, which is a great book. Um, it's a gratitude journal, but it's a Torah gratitude journal. So it's got, it, it, it encourages people to engage in the practicing of, of journaling gratitude and things that we're grateful for, but brings on every day, except brings a, an insight, a concept to do with gratitude, which is beautiful. Strongly recommend it. Um, and uh, we want to focus on gratitude. So why now? Since we had this uh, program advertised as Sho'elin Vadarshin, as the Gemara says, uh, before Pesach we have to start to ask questions and to learn the halachas and to prepare for the Seder and to prepare for Pesach, so what we're going to see is that Pesach is, of course, completely and very, very fundamentally connected with the concept of gratitude. So what we're going to do is, I'm, I'm going to just share, we're going to go back and forth a little bit. I'll share a quick part of here why Pesach is so connected with gratitude. And then Duran will actually talk about gratitude itself and share with us insights and gratitude and share with in whichever way he wants to. But the Maral has a beautiful idea. The Maral says that there's a Pasuk that says, Mi malil I'm not sure we always think about the Seder this way. Obviously we know that we, we thank Hashem and we, and, we, and we celebrate the fact that we became nations, uh, we became a nation by the Seder, we had our Mitzrayim and so on and so forth. But he brings a Gemara which is based on the Pasuk and Tehillim, Mi malil Hashem who is capable of praising Hashem. And the Gemara talks about this idea of praising Hashem. And the Gemara says that there's a, that there's a story of someone who is a chazan in the shul of Rabbi Hanina. And he came and he was re- repeating the Amidah. And you know, in the Amidah, we praise God. That's the first bracha. And we say, Hokel, Hagodel, Hagibor, Vahanoira. We say, God is the, the great God, the strong God, and the awesome God, right? Kel Elion, the supernal God, and so on. And this guy decided, you know what? Why praise Hashem so short? If you praise Hashem, let's go for it. So he started to say, Ho Adir, Ho Amit, Ho Azuz, Ho Miti, Ha'iri. He went on and on and on. And he thought he was doing a great job because why only praise Hashem with four words? You're going to praise Hashem with everything. So afterwards, Rabbi Hanina came up to him and said, uh, tell me, you finished? You think you praise Hashem enough now? He says, you did a terrible thing. We praise Hashem with Hokel, Hagodel, Lagiber, Vanoira because that's the expression that Moshe Rabbeinu used. When you praise Hashem with your own praises and you try to increase in the praises, you're actually undermining the praise of Hashem. Why? Because, as he gave a moshal, he said, let's say someone is extremely wealthy. Billionaire, so you come to me and say, Oh, this guy is so amazing. He, 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 you know, he, he owns $500,000. So you're making a joke. Like, <laughs> this guy is so incredibly, infinitely wealthy. And I like, say, what's, what's his greatness? $500,000. He says, Same thing with Hashem. Hashem is, 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 is infinite. There's no way a human being can even possibly fathom even a little bit the greatness of Hashem. So praising Hashem is a fundamental problem. And if we have to be very careful, we know even about Halal, we do at different times we praise Hashem, different ways of praising Hashem. But even Halal, which is praise for Hashem, we know we, we can't say every day. In fact, the Gemara says, that if someone says Halal every day, it's a terrible thing. Because we do it when the rabbis told us to do it, we do it when it's a mitzvah, because praising Hashem can be problematic. The Seder, we praise Hashem a lot. In fact, towards the end of the Haggadah, we say, the Fikach, uh, we have to thank, we have to praise, we have to do all this, right? Says the Maral, see, if that's the case, why do we praise so much by the, by the Seder? And why do we praise altogether, even with Amidas? If it's such a problem to praise Hashem, why do we, why sometimes do we praise Hashem? Do we, do we praise Hashem if it's like undermining Him, undermining His greatness? Says the Maral, we have no choice. We have to on some level praise Hashem. Why? 
because we have to show gratitude. That's the reason. We don't praise Hashem to highlight the greatness of Hashem because we do an appalling job of highlighting the greatness of Hashem. We praise Hashem because we need to feel gratitude. Never the morale says that the, the, the fa- foundation of the Seder is a Korosatoy. That's the foundation of the Seder. Right? And we need to, in other words, we need to show gratitude. That's why we, we follow a format. We don't, we don't increase. We don't overdo it because when we overdo it, we're actually undermining His praise. But we use the phrases that were given to us. And therefore, in the story of Brochus, we, we, we are told that in the Amidah, we, the Anshik and Esesak Dore, the people who, who, who composed the Tefillah, where they told us we have to praise Hashem, they only used phrases which were well, well, well-trodden phrases, in other words, right? The one that Moshe Rabbeinu used, okay, like, not to be extra. Why do they use it all together? Because every single day we have to show gratitude to Hashem, says the Maral, that in fact is the basis of the whole Seder. The basis of the whole Seder is gratitude, HaKara So it's a timely time to talk about gratitude, which the runners is going to do right now. Go for it. Scott, thank you. In the middle, we'll say some other connections to Pesach, mm-hmm. but you got it. Um, so, one such idea, which... I think it's very interesting, meaning even in the Amidah, which is where the Rabbi spoke about that you don't elaborate on Hashem's praises, there's a very interesting thing. We, we separate the Amidah into three sections. The first section is praising Hashem. The middle section is requesting from Hashem. And the last section we call, which is thanking Hashem. What's interesting out of the last section is three brachot. Only the middle bracha is actually thanking Hashem. Rabbi Levi and I, when I was in a in America, he sent me a beautiful vote and on, on an idea in this section of the Amidah. And then we kind of discussed a little bit. We didn't come up with a... I don't know if you came up with an answer, but we, we discussed saying it's very interesting. The last section of the Amidah is all, all called Vishas <coughs> Hoda. It's, it's the section where we're thanking Hashem, but it's only the middle bracha. So there is a tradition um, in Judaism that the central point of anything really reveals its essence. So this, this is the thought which I had, meaning of the three brachot at the end, the middle bracha is, praising, is, is thanking Hashem. So therefore we call the whole thing thanking Hashem. But first we're asking Hashem, Shechina to be returned, which is the first of the, the last three. The last one is we ask Hashem for peace. That, that sounds like requests, not thanking Hashem, but the middle one is thanking Hashem. There's something which goes beyond that, which is really fascinating. When the Chazan's repeating the Amidah, Something really fascinating happens towards the end of his repetition. Suddenly, everyone, instead of just answering Amen, everyone almost says their own section, their own personal prayer within the repetition of the Amidah, which is meant to be said only by the Chazan. And what prayer is that? It's Moedin. It's one where everyone bows down. What does Moedin mean? It means thanking Hashem. It means we're acknowledging Hashem as the source of everything. Which means it's, it's really fascinating because you're not allowed to add praises, but seemingly what we do is we jump in and almost interrupt the, the chazan in a sense and we do our own, our own thanking Hashem. Now it's not praising, it's thanking. But why do we do that? So it's an amazing idea because no one can thank someone else on your behalf. I mean, the chazan's repeating the Amidah. He's saying all the brachot on behalf of the community. But it's up to us. He can't say thank you to Hashem for us. The, the sages, when they established the Amidah, there's a whole Gomorrah. It's when the chazan's saying... Modin, what should the tzibur, what should the community say? And you have different rabbis coming along and saying, what, you should say this, you should say this, you should say this. And really it's all centered around this, the same theme. And how, do we, how does the Gomorrah conclude? We should say all of them. Meaning, we personally, each and every single one of us. So when my wife and I were, were uh, compiling, we didn't write the book, we compiled the book, we compiled a whole bunch of sources to sh- see gratitude through the eyes of the Torah. We decided on a name, we wanted to call it Modim Anach Mulach which is that we want to thank Hashem, we want to acknowledge Hashem, but not because it's us, but because it's a gratitude journal, which means it's, a, it's, a, it's your personal journal. So the whole idea is when you're writing in this journal, thanking Hashem, one of the ideas is, no, 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 it's yours, it's not ours. It's not, we're not writing a book for you, we're just providing you blank pieces of paper with a few words of inspiration for you to now express your gratitude to Hashem. So that's, that's one idea. What, what I'll just add sure. briefly is, what's really fascinating is the word modim, has got the numerical value of 100. Okay? The mem, vav, dalud. It's, it's, it spells that it's got the numerical value of 100. And what's really interesting is in um, Tehillim, the chapter of Tehillim, which focuses on gratitude to Hashem, 100. is 100. It's 100. 
it's, it's, re- it's really, really interesting. Um, the uh, Rav Hutner describes the fact that when Modim has got two sections, we actually repeat. We say, Modim and and later on we say, Nodeh Lecha. It's the same thing. It's just, why are we thanking Hashem twice? So he says, no, no, one is acknowledging. Hashem, Modim is an acknowledgement. That's what gratitude is. It's recognizing we are deficient with, and we are nothing without what someone else is providing us. So Modim is the acknowledgement. Nodeh is now the part where we're actually saying thank you to Hashem. Um, so Rav Hutna describes what's the word that, descri- that you should use to express thanks to Hashem. He says the word al. And it's in, it's in, the, it's in, the, it's in the Amidah there. So I'll read it to you over here. It goes like this. Um, when we say, so we say, Modim anach nolach, so shatahu Hashem lokeinu velokeinu velokeinu lelam vaed, tzur chayinu magen yushayinu atahu lador vador. Then we say, Nodeh lecha unzapeti lasecha al. Al chayinu hamasurum yadecha va'al nishmaseinu. It's on this and on this and on this. The word al is spelt ayin, lamed. Ayin has got the numerical value of 70. Lamed has got the numerical value of 30. Together it's 100. It's amazing. And what's really interesting, and this I had this ha'ora when I was in America recently. Uh, my wife doesn't like me saying this, this idea because, well, she likes it, but I say it a lot. So she, but I shared this idea with... with uh, huh? Please never heard. Yeah, yeah. So we, I, I share this idea a lot. And what, one of the ideas which I, I had a ha'ora that the word al is an ayin, and then it's a lamed. So what's an ayin? Ayin is an ayin. So the whole idea is al is you've got to see le. Le is what? Is what? For the good. That's, what, that's the whole thing. It's gratitude. It's all about, and that's why we call it hakarat hatov. It's recognizing the good. That's what it is. And lastly, uh, just for the section, is that the Amidah actually mentions al 17 times. And 17 is the numerical value of tov, which is, which is tetzvah best. Which means the fact that you have to recognize the good. Al. That's, that's 17 times to recognize the iron, let tov. You have to look at the good. Beautiful. So that's a short idea. Beautiful, beautiful. So it's amazing. Everything is bashkocha prat. Everything is, nothing happens by, by chance. So I don't mention the whole idea of 100. And the chapter 100 in Tilim is Mizmor Lasoida. It's the chapter of Thanksgiving, which actually is a reference to a korban, a sacrifice that used to be brought down in the base of Mikdash. And people wanted to show gratitude to Hashem for various miracles or various good things that had happened to them. And the next word I was about to say has to do with the Korban Toyota. So it's, 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 it flows very nicely. So we know that on Pesach night, we, we have the famous Rabban Gamliel. Rabban Gamliel says that whoever doesn't explain the three central themes of Pesach hasn't fulfilled his obligation, right? What are they? Oh, what are they? Three things? Sorry? Pesach, Matzah, Umar. Pesach means the Korban Pesach, the Paschal lamb that used to be brought in the Thomas of Besamikdosh, the Matzah that we eat, and the Mur. And everyone asked the question, many answers given to this, but was, everyone asked the question about how come it's in that order? Because actually in the time of the Besamikdosh, the Korban Pesach was actually eaten last. It had to be eaten at the end of the meal, um, like, like we eat Afikoyman, right? So really it should be Matzah, Mur, Pesach, not Pesach, Matzah, Mur, right? So the Ksav Soifer says, because it's, it's brought down from many places that the Korban Pesach, the Korban Pesach that is brought on Pesach night, is, is it, there's different categories of Korbanis, is what we call a Korban Shlomim. It's a peace offering, which means one of those Korbanis, one of those sacrifices that everyone partakes of. Some sacrifices only Kohanim eat, only, whatever, only, or, 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 or only Hashem eats, mean only goes in the Mizbech. Shlomim means a Korban that everyone has a part in, um, and everyone has to, has to eat. So the Korban Toida, the Toido offering, the Thanksgiving offering, was a Shlomim. Korban Pesach was also a Shlomim. And therefore, Mepharshim explained that the Korban Pesach, besides being its unique Korban, the Korban Pesach was actually a Korban Toido. So it's an interesting thing. It's a Korban Toido, it was a Thanksgiving offering, um, which, is what, which is what's spoken about in chapter 100 of, of Tehillim, Mizmer the Soida, Korban Toido. Therefore, says Ksav Soifer, therefore, when we say about the three fundamental parts of the Seder, Pesach comes first. Because again, like the Maral said, the central theme of say the night is gratitude, is thanksgiving, is saying thank you to Hashem and acknowledging the gift that Hashem gives us. Just want to add to that, just one interesting thing that I heard from Dina. So maybe some of you heard this already. Uh, I think it was in the Shabbos year, so if you hear us, uh, uh, apologies for the revision, but you've got to say something to shame Omer, you know. So, so uh, it's also part of gratitude. Um, 
So an amazing thing, because this idea that the carbon Pesach is actually a carbon Toida, a Thanksgiving offering, explains one of the versions, the Nusach, that many, many people say in the Manishtana. Why? One of the questions of the Manishtana is, um, that if the, all other nights we eat chametz or Matzah, and tonight we only eat Matzah, right? But in many, I think Nusach Ashkenaz, actually we, we, we don't say it like that, but many, in, in many, I think most of the Ashkenaz at least, the child asks, B'chol HaLeila is all the nights, Ono Eichlim, we eat chametz u matzah. We eat chametz and matzah. Not, we say chametz oi matzah. Chametz o matzah, right? But, they, but a lot of Nusach says chametz u matzah. Chametz and matzah. So that's a very strange expression. What do you mean chametz and matzah? You, you eat chametz and matzah? Not necessarily. Sometimes you're in the mood of uh, egg salad and matzah, so you eat matzah. Sometimes you're in the mood of chametz, you eat chametz. It would seem that chametz oi matzah, really, right? So what's the pshat of chametz u matzah? So the pshat's like this. The carbon toy does an amazing thing. It's a very unique carbon. Bechal, we have a rule in the Beis Amigdash. Whenever there was flour or bread or anything that had to do with grain coming together with the sacrifices, it always had to be matzah. It cannot be chametz. Right? There's only two exceptions. One exception is the carbon that was brought on shvuas, which we won't talk about now. That's for shvuas. The shtei alechem, the two breads. And the other one was carbon toy. Carbon toy came with, I think, 40 breads or 40 rolls or something. And many of them were actually chametz. There was chametz, and there was some of them were chametz, some of them were matzah. Right? So this is the pshat that the child is asking. We're about to sit down to the Seder. We're going to have a carbon Pesach. The carbon Pesach is a Thanksgiving offering. It's a carbon toida. So the child says, I don't understand. Shabachal is all the other nights of the year when we have a carbon toida. We have chametz u matzah. We have chametz and matzah. Some of the rolls are chametz, some of the rolls are matzah. But Alayla said, tonight when we eat the carbon Pesach, it's only matzah. That's the, that's the pshat of the chomets u matzah. It's a very, very nice pshat. So therefore, that just highlights this concept that carbon Pesach is actually a carbon toida. That's why it's first in the Seder, Pesach matzah bar, because that's what the whole foundation of the whole Seder is. The idea of the carbon toida, the mizmer, the, the, um, the, 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 the concept of, 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 of 100. And uh, that's why, according to this, this would answer the nusach, of Chometz u I just want to say one thing you said also, I just want to add one thing to what you said. You said that Moedim is also a sign of acknowledgement, right? Because you have to, you have to acknowledge, right? That we're deficient. So we know that, that, that the, the word Moide is an interesting word. It can mean to thank. It also means to acknowledge, but actually it's a very deep acknowledgement. It's a stronger acknowledgement. It's actually a surrender in a way. We find this in the Mishnah, where sometimes um, the famous uh, Lashen in the Mishnah was said that there was a Machlai, because there was a dispute between Chachamim and Reb Meir. Chachamim was a group of rabbis and Reb Meir. And there was one issue where the Chachamim agreed with Reb Meir. So it says there, in this issue, Moidim Chachamim and Reb Meir. They, not just acknowledge, they defer, they surrender to him. Right? When we get up in the morning, we say Moida Ani, which of course is gratitude, right? It's not just about thanking Hashem, but surrendering to Hashem. And that's why the before we talk about that, that, that gratitude has got to do with being humble. It's about, it's, it's, the only way we can surrender is if we think everything comes from ourselves, then, uh, then, there's, then there's no surrendering. But when we have gratitude, we, we realize that, no, we actually have little to ourselves, everything comes from Hashem, then we're just not thanking, we're also surrendering, which really becomes the basis of being able to go out of Mitzrayim. We can't go out of ourselves if we, if we, if we stuck in ourselves. That's, what fits, that's why it fits with this concept that gratitude is the basis of the Seder, because you have to, you have to surrender first, which is the same idea as Hoido, Korban Toido. I'm so glad you mentioned. I, I had a question last night, literally, the question which I had, we, we didn't plan this. The question which I had was, if you read in the Siddur, when we come to the section, we say, Mizmor Soida every single day. But when it comes to there, if you look on Cholomai Pesach, it says, don't say this on Pesach. So one of the reasons is because it's it has comments in there. But this was my question which I had last night. I said, Pesach and the Seder night is the whole foundation is gratitude. And what? We don't say the one Korban, which is gratitude. You answered it up. There's no the Pesach Avrin is. Carbon Pesach is carbon toy. Yeah, Beautiful. Right. Very good. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, okay, I'll share something which is uh, um, going a little bit back to basically the, the foundation of human existence. Um, and if there's time, I'll, I'll add just a little, a little nuance onto that for, for Pesach. So if you look at how Adam Harishon, the first man, was created, it's there's something really, really interesting what happens. It's in chapter 2, verse 5, it says as follows. The, the Torah says as follows. So, firstly, let me take a step back. Day 1, 
day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, Adam Harishon was created. Does anyone know when the trees were created? The plants and herbage and everything. Does anyone know? So it'll be, it's day three, when he, Hashem started creating the trees. What's interesting is after all five days into the sixth day, what, when it's, sum, it's summarizing what happens with creation, it says as follows. Now any tree of the field was not yet on the earth, and any herb of the field had not yet sprouted. Which is interesting, meaning Hashem created plants and trees, but he kept them below the soil. They had not yet sprouted. They were inside the soil. Why did Hashem do this? This is really interesting. Because Hashem had not yet set rain upon the earth. So he hadn't let it rain. So he didn't create, seemingly create rain yet, or at least the water droplets falling down yet. But why didn't he create rain? So the verse continues, because there was no man to work the soil. So this is really fascinating. It's a three-step process that he created trees, but he kept them below the surface. Why did he do that? Because he hadn't let it rain. Why did he not let it rain? Because there wasn't a person yet on earth. What's one got to do with the other? I understand the first two steps, but what's... So Rashi comments on the spot, and he says something really amazing. He explains that, um, that Adam was not on the earth yet. Why? Because he needed to show gratitude. So how does that work? He needed to show gratitude, which means as follows. Hashem wanted a human being... To recognize that the soil, there was something missing. What was missing? Life on this earth. So I need to acknowledge the fact that there is rain missing. Because rain is the thing that causes plants to grow. So therefore I need to acknowledge that. And then I need to dive into Hashem and thank Him for the rain. Then Hashem will only bring rain. So that's what He did. But so, how did He then create Adam? So after that... After he does that, Hashem, I'll, I'll tell you outside, he takes moisture and he takes soil and he molds it together and then he breathes an ashama into Adam Arishon. Adam's alive, he's now awake, and now he davens, he sees that there's no trees, so he now davens to Hashem. So this is, this is the thought that's, that came out. I, I heard a shiro from Mrs. Michal Horovitz in, in America. Um, my wife and I are, are, are big fans. And... When she said a particular shiur, it sparked this idea. And the idea is as follows. How was Adam created? He was created with three basic ingredients. He was created with moisture. He was created with dust, earth, soil. And he was created with a ruach, with a... With an asham. Adam's first task in this world and the purpose of his creation was to daven for rain and to thank Hashem for it. How did he know it's a daven for rain? How did he know that rain's the thing that will grow the trees? So, I, I don't know if this is true, but I think, I think it makes sense. He looked at what he had in his life, and how he was created, and he acknowledged that, and he wanted to thank Hashem for that. So, how is he created? With water and soil, and then there's life. Breathe life. So, what did he do? He daven to Hashem for rain, water to come into the soil, the earth, and then what will happen is trees will then sprout. And that's what that's meaning, and this is this is a key a key theme which throughout my wife and I when we did research on this topic, a constant theme which came up is the foundation of human existence and of the Torah is gratitude. I meaning the whole purpose of why we were created was to thank Hashem. It's it's Rashi. It's it's explicit in the creation of Hashem, in the creation of Adam Arishim. Um but then it leads to, to a question. Can I go one step further? Yeah, further? please, of course. Okay, so it leads to one, a question. When Hashem said the Aseret Adibro, the ten, incorrectly translated, the ten commandments, the ten statements, He said what the first commandment is, Anoichi Hashem, that I am Hashem. But that's not the commandment. If you read the full commandments, Anoichi Hashem Elokecha, I am Hashem your God, Asher would say, Sicha Me'eres Bishraim, who took you out of the land of Egypt. The second part very strange. The Rosh, one of the commentators, describe, he says as follows. He says, if you don't believe in the second part of the statement, you will not believe in the first part of the statement. You cannot believe in God if you do not believe that he took you out of Mizraim. But this is the fundamental question. The question is, why did it say that he took you out of Egypt? It should have said, I am Hashem, your God, who created you. So, um... Again, I'm relating back to when I was in America recently. It was, a, it was a wild experience for me and a very inspirational experience. I met Rabbi Pesach Kron. 
um, and he gave me a copy of his Haggadah. So he's gone on Haggadah, he calls it the Magid's Seder. And in there, the opening page, my wife showed me this last night, um, he raises the same question. And he says as follows, he says, because there's two elements to the Jewish people. One is when human beings were created, and one is when the Jewish people were formed as a nation. And when we're formed as a nation, there was extra love infused, and there was a bond which perpetuates us to thank Hashem, to show gratitude. So, an analogy is we thank my, my father in laws here, my, my father's here, when, when my parents brought me into this world, and when my in laws brought my wife into this world, and all of you in this room, when you were brought into this world, we're thanking our parents for bringing us into this world. But what, do we thank them, like just human nature, do we thank them for bringing us into this world more often, or for the little things, the ongoing love and consistency that our parents showed to us? I venture to guess that even though they brought us into this world, a, almost in a sense, a greater level of bondage between the fact that we are bonding together is the consistent love showed, showered upon us. And with that, you form a relationship. Yes, there's a relationship formed at birth, but when it continues, it's, it's formed and it's concretized. So that's what Rav Pesach Kron basically explains very briefly the fact that why we say, why Hashem says that I am Hashem your God who took you out of Egypt and not I am Hashem your God who created you. Why? Because when He took us out of Egypt, that's a moment where we have to acknowledge the fact that we became a nation and we formed a closer bond with Hashem. We say it, it's throughout our, our tefillot within, when we... Uh, doing Kiddush on a Friday night. I it, uh, had a friend whose grandfather was a chazan. So when he came to do his, uh, at his bar mitzvah on Friday night in Shul, his grandfather said Kiddush on behalf, and I remember him saying, Zeiche, 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 Litzias Misraim. It, it's in Kiddush. Why are we remembering Litzias Misraim? At every single holiday, it's a Zeche Litzias Misraim. It's a remembrance that Hashem took us out of Egypt. What's this remembrance? We, we weren't even there. So the Sefer Haredim brings an amazing, amazing Ha'ora, an amazing idea. He, he brings what's called a Kal V'chomer, a, a profoundly logical deduction. He says, if we are obligated to remember and to have a conscious awareness of the gift that Hashem did for the Jewish people back then, how much more so do we have to be thankful to Hashem for our lives today? Meaning this idea, there's a dual point of we're created and then the ongoing bond of Hashem forming us into the Jewish people. And that's, for me, was a beautiful, beautiful idea. The fact it's really the foundation of our existence as well as the foundation of who we are as a people. So that's a beautiful, beautiful idea. Wow. So just... Um Extending this concept a little bit into the Seder, back into the Seder. Um, we know one of the famous ideas of the Seder, one of the famous songs we sing at the Seder is Tayeno, right? But just to give a bit of context, so what's, I mean, what is that song all about? What's the thing? Because really the, the point of that whole song of Tayeno is actually the next paragraph. Um, because we go through 15 things that Hashem did for us. In each one we say, had he just done that, it would have been enough. Dayenu. But then, our point really is, Allah has come of a come like a kal v'chaim. Allah has come of a come. How much more so? We have to thank Hashem because He did everything for us. And we go through the list again. She said, Oh, no, He took us out of Mitzrayim and He took us and He, and he judged the gods and He drowned them and He judged them and He took us to Asina and He brought the man. Everything. We go through all the 15 things until He eventually brought us into Eretz Israel. He brought us to the land of Israel and He built a base on for us, right? So, why, do, why is it so important to have that first part to go through? Um, to go through each one. Had he just done this one, it would have been enough, right? So there's so, I mean, there's so much been written on Dayena, but one of the, in, in the context of gratitude, I think it teaches us a very, very important thing, is gratitude really takes training. Because one of the things that we have to do to be grateful people, I think, is to learn to notice. Notice even the small things, right? One of the big examples of gratitude in Yiddishkeit is the morning blessings that we make. We make a bracha every single morning. What do we make a bracha for? That we won a lot or no? We make a bracha of the things that we just expect that are going to happen anyway. Are we expecting the small things? Pokech Ibrahim Hashem, Hashem opens up his eyes, he gives us clothes to wake, he lets us walk, he took us out of bed. The very, very simple things that often we forget about, we take for granted, and we learn that each one is an amazing gift. But also we need to understand that sometimes, not only are the small things little gifts, 
But often we find it hard to be grateful and to really express gratitude. It's amazing. You mentioned Moedim before, right? In Moedim, we, talk, we say amazing words there. We say that Al Nisecha, we talk about Hashem's miracles, Shabachol Eser, all the time, Erev, Vavokev, Tsaroim, morning, Shabachol Yom, every day, evening, um, morning, and lunchtime, right? That's what we say. In other words, we acknowledge that Hashem, now we know not all our days are so good. That's a fact. Sometimes we have challenges, and sometimes things don't go well, and sometimes there's real challenges and big challenges. And yet we don't stop saying, boy, we don't say, you know, except for the 17th of March when things didn't go well, right? We say every single day, Hashem gives us these miracles and amazing things. Because one of the challenges we have is that when things don't go well and we have challenges, we get lost and focused on the things that are going wrong and we forget to pick up and to really be focused and to be grateful for our tremendous blessings and to understand how each blessing from Hashem is infinite. And that's one of the lessons from Dayena that we say. We say, of course, we're very grateful to, to the generosity of Hashem. We're amazingly thankful that Hashem did all 15 things. But the truth is that it's not the 15 things in total that create the blessing. It's not the 15 things in total that necessitate gratitude. It's every single one. If Hashem had just taken out of Mitzrayim, even though the 14 would be missing and our life would be missing and challenging, can you imagine Chas Hashem if we didn't have a Torah, right? It would be terrible. But yet, we, we still date Dayenu because we, we, it, it'll still be an amazing blessing. Amazing gratitude to, to, to Hashem for the, one, for the first thing, for the second thing, for the third thing. So one of the lessons we learned from Dayenu be, before we thank Hashem for the amazing gift of having all 15 things, we acknowledge that we have to break down the day. Even when things don't go well, we have to remember to focus. Maybe when we say Moedim is a good time to do it, or the morning brachas, to focus on what we do have, not what we don't have. The little things, that, the, the big things that Hashem, what we call little things, but really they're big things, having clothes, having roof over our head, being able to walk and talk and so on, those are amazing blessings. Nisecha, they are miracles. And maybe that's what we mean in, in the Moedim when we say, Erev avoyke v'tzaroim. You know, what's the difference between night and day? Spiritually speaking, day is always a symbol of clarity, of goodness, of when things are bright, when things are going well. Erev is like uh, night. Night is darkness, confusion. But we say no. We, we acknowledge that there's miracles of Bechol'es. There's always miracles of Hashem. Even at night. The morning for sure. The lunchtime for sure. But even at night. Bechol'es. Every time. Even Erev. How do we do it? We have to break it down like the Dayena. We have to be able to say, you know, even this thing. Yes, my day was, looked like a terrible time. Everything's from Hashem. But everything's ultimately from the good. But the, today was very, very challenging. But you know what? I still, have, I still have a house. I still have a relationship. I still have a job. All these things we have to, I still have clothes. We have to break them down like the, the Dayenu does and say just for that, it's worth having amazing gratitude for Hashem's miracles. Back to you. So I had an aura very similar to this. Um, this happened maybe four years ago. Is I woke up one morning and my left ear was blocked. At least that's what it felt like. And this happened for how, how many days did I go without seeing a GP? Three days. Three days. Because I thought it was just, I don't know, wax or whatever. I was like, I, I'm not sure. Eventually I went to go see a GP. He didn't, he was a young GP. He didn't really, I don't think, knew exactly what he was doing. Eventually my dad said, you've got to go see, um, you got to go see uh, an ENT. So he referred me to one of his colleagues and I went there. And it's uh, something called sudden deafness. Which basically just means you wake up and you can't hear. So this was in my left ear, basically felt like my finger was in my ear. That was like the, the feeling. So you could hear almost like underwater in a sense, like that. Ear is completely healthy. It looks completely fine. MRI scan, completely fine. It's, they don't know what it is. It's something called sudden deafness. And it's relatively, you know, uh, more frequent than, than I, I went, when I went for a steroid injection in my ear, the anesthetist said, oh, I've also got sudden deafness. It's like, and if you don't treat it within a certain amount of time, it's not fixable, at least what they think. But meaning it's like time sensitive. So within the first, I don't know what it is, 10 days, a steroid injection will work. If it's not that, except there's like different. But this was the ha'ora, this was the thought which I had. Every single morning for, at that stage, call it 31 years, I woke up and Hashem blessed me with hearing out of two ears. On that day, I woke up and he blessed me with hearing out of one ear. Meaning it, it, was, it, it, it gave me such comfort to know the fact that, wow, I can hear. Okay, it's out of one ear, but I didn't deserve to hear at all. So, okay, for 31 years he gave me this amount of blessing. But if he gives me a little bit less, should I not be grateful for the little bit less? There's a famous story of the, 
neighbor who brought in the newspaper for the elderly gentleman who lived next door. Every single day he brought him the newspaper from the street to his front door. One day the elderly gentleman opens his front door and the newspaper's not there and it's out in the street. So he goes marching with his walker all the way next door and knocks on the door. And the guy opens the door and he says, good morning. He says, my newspaper. So he says, what about it? He says, it's not at my front door. He says, every single morning I do a chesed, I do a kindness for you by bringing you a newspaper. The one morning I don't do a kindness to you, you upset with me that I didn't do the kindness, that it was like back to level one. So meaning, no, we should always acknowledge that which we have. There is another side of that equation is like, yes, meaning there, there's a, Rav Arya Leibowitz said an amazing idea. He's my virtual Rebbe. Well, not anymore, virtual Rebbe. I got to meet him. Uh, I've heard he, he's got over 12,000 shirim online. He's one of the most prolific speakers. Um, he went to Israel after October 7th. And he, he was explaining to the Israelis in the, in the room when he was speaking, saying it's amazing how people from Chutz Aretz come to Eretz Israel to show achdus and to show chesed and kindness and love for each other. So one of the Israelis says, it's not achdus. It's not brother, brotherhood. He said, it's not chesed. You're not doing chesed. So I really was a little bit taken back. What do you mean? So he says, when your arms are cold and you put on a jumper, are you doing chesed to your arms? When it's raining and you hold up an umbrella, are you doing chesed to your head? He said, no. We, we one body. We, we am Yisrael. We one. You're not doing kindness. You're doing far more than that. You, we just are. We're the same body. We're the same group. We're the same neshama. We, we one people. So meaning, in the story of the guy, yes, he should have brought in the newspaper, okay, fine, but it's, it's the idea of, it's the idea of, of great and acknowledging those, those blessings, so it's, that just um, remind me. Um, one of the things which we realize with this, so that the idea of a, of a gratitude journal, just so you're aware, is for those who don't know, gratitude journaling is seemingly not a Jewish concept, at least in the world out there, it seems like a... Um, uh, psychology, you know, it's psychology of happiness and all of this, but really, as Rabbi Gori said, it's found that it, it's it's a Jewish it's a Jewish thought. But my wife, it was during COVID, my wife came up with the idea and saying, listen, we need to start acknowledging uh, the good, but through the eyes of the Torah. Let's let's do some research, and I'll tell you, what, I'll, I'll share just a few a few insights, and it's absolutely amazing what we found. So this is so this is the the Chofetz Chaim, it's a famous Chofetz Chaim. He writes as follows. This is, I'm not making this up. This is Chovetz Chaim. He writes that, take stock of your life, every single Erev Shabbos. Okay, not every day. He says, every Erev Shabbos. He says, if you found that you acted in accordance this past week with proper speech and according to Allah and you, you did everything correct, or if you find the fact that there's a sense of like, grace and manucha in your, in your soul, and you didn't stumble through negative speech, speaking Lashon Hara or anything like that, then, quote, you should, it is correct to express this in a notebook. You should take a notebook, you should write it down. This is from, um, this is from one of his Swaram Choyva Sashmira. He says you should write it down, and you should express that gratitude to Hashem that He's helped you in this. You should be happy with what Hashem has given you. You should also give thanks to Hashem for what He has helped with up until this point. And you should request... And this is the link between Akara Satov and Tvila, again with Adam Arishon. You should request divine assistance for the future. So that's the Chovet Chaim, as an example, what he says. There's, I'll, I'll bring you two other examples. This is Rav Shlomo Zaman Orbach. And this is uh, printed, this story is actually printed in a book called Sefer Nishmas Kol Chai, which is an art scroll book. Um, so we reached out to Art Scroll to ask them permission to reprint this in the book, and they said yes. Um, and this is the story. He, uh, an individual, came up to uh, Rav Shlomo Zaman in Israel and he was struggling and he wasn't, wasn't in the right mindset and he, he just was struggling. So this is the advice that uh, Rav Shlomo Zaman gave him. He said, buy a small notebook and keep it with you. Uh, but you, you don't have to buy, like, this, I'm not a good salesman, you don't have to buy this. You can buy like a one dollar notebook with a pen. I used to do this and put it in your pocket and you can do it. Buy a small notebook and keep it with you. Whenever you experience any sort of salvation, however small it might seem, write it in your book. It will fill up quickly, and then, when you daven Shmona Esra and you reach the tefillah of Modim Anach Nulach, open it and glance through it. If you follow my advice, you'll feel the kindness of Hashem 
at all times, and you will develop real faith. If you know what he has done for you in the past, then you can anticipate what he will do and continue to do into the future. I think it's beautiful, like really beautiful. Um, lastly, and it's a little bit different, not exactly to write in a notebook, but it's really the same idea. Uh, Rabbi Gerari wrote a Mikhtar Brocha for the, for the book, which we are very grateful for. And he, he mentioned in there the, the, blessing, the, the mitzvah of Bikurim, which was the fact that we need to bring our first fruits when you have, my dad's got a few Esrogim trees growing. So when one day they grow with fruits in Eretz Israel, you'll have a mitzvah, I believe, to bring the first fruits to, to the base of Mikdash. And the whole idea there is that you need to express. This is the way uh, Ravolbi then takes this idea and he says, if you look at the, the words in the Pasuk, it says, and you should say. That you need, that you, there's a declaration to say with the, with the mitzvah of Bikurim. When you bring your first fruits, it's, and it actually links back to the, to the Seder, because you have to go all the way back to the beginning of how Hashem, how the, we basically became enslaved, and then we, for 210 years, then Hashem took us out of the mighty hand. And you go through like basically Jewish history, acknowledging everything that's happened in order to thank Hashem. But it used the word Ba'amarta, you need to say. So Ravolbi says as follows. This means that one needs to express this statement of gratitude mentioned in the parasha, in the parasha of Bikurim, with a full mouth. From here we learn that one needs to express gratitude specifically with the mouth. There's a discussion, I think, in Halacha is, is writing down the same as speaking. It's the same thing. Okay? So for, for this, we'll, we'll side of the opinion. It says yes. So, but you need to express it with the mouth. I mean, the small idea is expressing. It's not good enough just to hold it in your heart. It's, and that's what he says. And not to keep it in your heart. Therefore, we should practice every day to recognize the good done by three people. And this is what he writes in Ale Shor, in his book on uh, basically of how to fix our, our midot, our character traits. Should speak to three, three people and express that. And if possible, we should express it to them in words that we are grateful for the good that was done for us. I mean, and these are just some examples of how... One needs to actually take the feeling of gratitude, put pen to paper, or verbally express it if you want. And this book hopefully guides us through, guides us through that. So that's a, another, just a brief idea. Shkoya, thank you very, very much. Um, we're out of time. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Um, thank you very much everyone for coming again. Uh, the Ron and Jenner's book is available there if you want. I'm sure that we can autograph a few. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we should always have the schuss to be able to recognize the good and be thankful to Hashem for all the blessings. And Hashem will definitely keep on blessing all of us with only good things. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for advancing. Uh,